Hello. In this video, we will connect our signup form to our API. To do this, we will replace the static layout with our components. Our form requires two required props, a submit handler and a validation schema. Let's add a handler and a simple console.log to display the values. For the schema, let's create a directory called duck and a constant file in it. To describe the validation scheme, we will use yup as always. For now, let's leave it as an empty object. We add the necessary exports and import our schema into the component. Great! The first field email is a string, we add a check for the email format and an error message. Let's do it by analogy with the required error. And we make our field required. The next field is password. Let's make it a required string. And the last field is the password confirmation field. The same rules, just add the equivalence rule. To do this, we can use ref, which will refer to another field in the form. And add a validation message. Now let's add a type for our form data and pass it to the form component. To do this, let's create a types file, describe our type with three fields, and we pass our type to the component. Now let's add all three inputs. To do this, we use our text input component and pass two required props into it, a name and a label.
Great. Let's quickly check that the validation really works. Amazing. All validation rules work and when the form is valid we see an object with values in the console. Now we can move on to the API. To do this, create a global directory API. And because the first requests will be sign in and sign up, let's put them in the off directory. Let's create a file for our mutation and add all the exports. Now we can describe our mutation. Let's start with the input arguments. The mutation can take an optional options argument, let's give it the type used mutation options from React Query. We return the use mutation call and pass our options argument to this hook. Let's add mutation key, it is needed for identification in the cache. We also add mutation fn, a function for processing the request, we use axios. Now let's add the types. Use mutation options takes four generic arguments, we are only interested in the first three, response data, error, variables. Because the error format will be the same in all mutations, let's make a global type. To do this, in the global directory DAC we will create a file types and describe our interface. We return to the mutation and pass the desired type for the error instead of any. Great! Now we return to the sign up component and connect our mutation. Add import and use our hook. Now in the handler, we will replace the console.log with a mutation call. We are in the wrong order. We need to swap the first argument and the third one. Great! Let's test our mutation. The mutation works, I got an error because this user already exists. If you are too, try a different email or clean up your database. But this is not essential. Now, if you notice, during the request, we don't see any status on the UI. Let's add a spinner to our submit button. But since since we want all our forms to have the same behavior, let's move the submit button into a separate component. 
To do this, let's create a components directory in the form. Let's name our component submit button. and add the basic structure. We could make our button a global component, but I want to show you how to extend a components interface and give it a child component. To do this, we will need to extend our form type by adding a new field to it for our component. Next, we create a clone of the component, assign it an extended type, and replace the export. Now we can call our component via form.submit button. Let's tweak our button a bit so that by default it has a blue color scheme and the ability to pass children. but assign the default value submit because in most cases it will. Now, as you can see, we have a TypeScript error for the forms on submit prop. This is because the final type for on submit is being used from flex props. Let's remove this with omit. Omit allows you to remove unnecessary fields from the type. As we can see, the bug has been fixed. Now let's go back to our button. We still haven't added the loading status. Because our button is inside a form, then we can use the form context. From the context, take the form state object and its is submitting field. Also, our handler should return a promise, let's fix that. There is a spinner, but it is endless, because we don't process our promise. Let's check again. Great, at the time of the request, our button has a loading status. In the next video, we will continue to work on the form and add error handling as well as processing for successful registration. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and like. See you in the next video.